When you want to apply conditional formatting to the background color of a matrix visual, well, that's easy. You just go to formatting options, then conditional formatting, and turn background color on. However, that color scale is based on all of the values that you see in the matrix visual. And what if you want to restart every row or every column? Well, that is more tricky, and that is what we are going to solve in this video. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Buzz, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything about Power BI. Now let's have a look how we can set up a color scale on a matrix visual that restarts every row. Now, as a starting point, we need to understand a little bit better on how we can set a color using a measure in Power BI. Now for this, I'm going to insert a card visual and on that card, I'm going to show the total sales amount. Now, let's now change the background color here under format and then background color. And then we can simply click on the drop down and choose a color from here or go to more colors. And then here, choose the color that you like. Now here at the bottom, you see the corresponding hex code and RGB code. So you can choose one or the other, but these are all of the options that you have. Now, if you set the color, using a measure in combination with conditional formatting, then you have many more options. So let's give that also a try. I'm gonna go over here and insert a new measure and let's call this measure color. And the color that I want to return is going to be red. Then we can go back to the background color, but instead of choosing it from here, we're going to use conditional formatting. And then we can say that we want to format by field value. And we have there a metric for the color. Then click OK. And you see now it returns the color red. However, we also have the option to use different color models. For example, hex codes, RGB, and HSL. And especially those last two are interesting for what we are trying to solve. Now, I think the HSL model is a little bit more intuitive, so let's focus on that one. Now, to show you how the HSL color model works, I created the following measure where you see all of the different components that this coloring method needs, which is the U, the saturation, lightness, and you can also add opacity if you want to. Now the U is the degree on the color wheel. So this value goes from zero to 360 and basically determines the main color. Then we have saturation, which is a value from zero to 100, where zero means completely gray and 100 means full color. Then you have the lightness. So zero for lightness means completely black and 100% lightness means completely white. All right, then the last optional argument is opacity, which you can set from zero to one. Now the final color you can then return by simply using quotation marks and then writing HSL A. And then we have the different inputs for the U, saturation, lightness, and opacity. Now here I did it with what if parameters. Now let me show you quickly how to do that. Now to create what if parameters, you simply go to modeling and then under modeling, you choose new parameter. And if we, for example, want to create a parameter for the U value, then you could say, okay, here I want to have the U which is going to be a whole number that starts at zero. The maximum that we can have here is 360 and then increments of one. Then add the slicer also to the page and then maybe also set the default. So maybe in the middle and then let's click on okay. And this creates basically a disconnected table where you have column with the U, the lightness or the saturation and one measure that shows you which value the user picked in the slicer that got added to the page. Now, here I already set it up for the U lightness and saturation, and basically this is the end result. So here we can play around with the U, and if I slide this one a little bit to the right, you can see that red turns into orange, and orange turns into yellow, and the more to the right I go, the more green it gets. And then after 120, then it goes more into the blue. And then for saturation and lightness, well, with there we can further define how sharp the color should be. Okay, so now that we have a better understanding how the HSL color model works, we have to find a way for our values to determine the U. And what I want to do is scale my values between 0 and 120, because those are the U values that determine red to green. All right, so let's write a measure for this. So this is going to be our conditional formatting measure. So let's call it CF. And first of all, I want to determine the overall maximum and minimum. So one thought that you might have is that you can just use max 
And here we're looking at sales values. So I'm going to look for the maximum sales amount. And uh, here we have in our sales table, the sales amount. Close your brackets. Now let's add a measure to the matrix visual. And you see that the values are much lower. And that's because it doesn't return the maximum of the displayed values, however the maximum sales transaction for a certain store and quarter in our case. So it looks at the row by row sales amounts in a data set instead of the aggregated values. Now to return the maximum of the displayed values, well, that's a bit more tricky. So let's go back to our measure. Now let's first of all, get rid of our max function again. All right, and over here, we're going to first build a table, a summary table with the aggregated values, okay? So let's call this one summary table. And we can create a summary table using, well, the function summarize, okay? Now, which table do we wanna summarize? Well, we have our sales table, and we're going to summarize it by the store name. So let's look for the store name. And we also want to summarize it by the year. So I'm going to take the year for my day table and we want to summarize it by the quarter. All right, so there we have the quarter. Now then we also want to add a column with the sales amounts at that level of detail. So I'm going to use an add columns function. So add columns here at the beginning. Then we have the summarize table and we're going to add a column. So let's call this one sales. And we can calculate the sales. Well, we have our sales amount measure, so total sales. All right, and let's close the brackets. Now you can actually visualize this table that we create here on the fly by just copying it and then go to modeling, new table. And let's call this one example. And then summary table. And then we can just copy over the code that we wrote before. I don't need this variable, so that's fine. And press enter. And here you have the summary table with the store name, the year, the quarter, and the total sales at that level of detail, the aggregated amounts. And what I wanna do next is basically go over all of these total sales at the aggregated level and check out what is the maximum and what is the minimum. Okay, so let's return to our measure. And now I want to add a new variable. And this is going to be the max value variable. Now the maximum value we can now find by iterating over that summary table, checking out the total sales value, and then returning the maximum. All right, so this is a max x function. And the table that we're going to iterate, well, that's the summary table. And over here, we want to return every time the sales amount. So let's do a square bracket open. And then you see over here, we have the sales, which corresponds to over here, the sales column that we created there. Okay, and then, we close our max x function. All right, now let's first check if this works. Okay, so I'm going to return the max value. Now looking at a matrix visual, you see that a measure returns well the same values as the total sales. Now, why is that? Because there's filter context on the year and quarter and the store. And what we will need to do first is remove the filter context so that we can find the overall maximum. All right, so we have to go back to our measure and then here for our summary table, we can use the function that's called calculate table. All right, and then we go after the closing bracket of the add columns function. And here we need to remove our filters, which we can do with all, all selected or remove filters. Now here, let's go for all selected. All right, and let's put in nothing for now and then close the brackets. And let's indent this a little bit so that it looks better. Now let's see what it returns now. So now you see that our measure returns the overall maximum of the displayed values, which is exactly what we are looking for. So for the minimum, the overall minimum, we can do exactly the same. So let's go back to our measure. And now I'm going to copy the maximum value, the overall maximum value. And I'm just going to change max into min. And also here for our iterator, we're going to use min x instead. Okay, so now we are able to return the overall maximum of the displayed values and the overall minimum. Well, for the next part, we just need to scale the values from zero to 120. And this just requires a little bit of mathematics. Okay, so follow me for the next part. So we are going to have over here another variable where we are going to calculate the range. The range is the difference between the overall maximum and the minimum. So just simply take the maximum value and subtract the minimum value. 
So now that we have our range of values, we can calculate the u. All right, so let's create another variable, u. And then we can do the following division. So let's use the function divide. And what I want to divide is our total sales value. So we have our total sales measure. I'm going to subtract the, well, the overall minimum value. So the min value that we have stored in our variable, min value. Once we have that difference, we can divide that by, well, the range. Okay, so I can refer to the variable range. Now let's close the brackets. Now this value will be a value between zero and one. However, I need a value between zero and 120, all right? So that means I'm going to multiply that with 120. Okay, now let's see how that looks like. So I'm going to return the values for the U, all right? And go back to our matrix. All right, so now in our matrix visual, you see that for our lowest total sales value, we have a U of zero. And for the highest one, we have 120, okay? Now let's go back to the measure. Just to be on the sure side, I would still wrap the u in, inside of a round function and round it to two decimals, all right? Just to make sure it works. Okay, so now we're almost there. We have our u value. The next thing is to return the color. So let's add another variable and we can call this variable color. And here we can start off with HSLA. That's the color model that we use. So let's open the brackets. And now we can put in all of the different components. So I use an ampersand uh, to combine different text strings. So the first component is going to be the U value. Uh, so it can just simply refer to our U variable. All right. Okay, so now that we have the U, we also need the values for the saturation, lightness, and opacity. All right. So let's first put in a comma. Then we put for saturation 100%. I'm going to also put this in between quotation marks. All right. I put it in as text, all right? So then we also need another comma. So I'm going to put in another comma and then combine that with the value for the lightness. So for lightness, let's put it to, let's say 90%. And then the last value is going to be for the opacity and the opacity, I just put it at one for now. And then we also need a closing bracket in between the quotation marks. All right, and we can then return the color. So now in a matrix, you see our conditional formatting measure returns the corresponding color codes for each value. All right, so now it's time to actually apply the conditional formatting and see if it works. So I'm going to take out our conditional formatting measure. And now I go to format and then conditional formatting and apply a background color. Now, this is the standard conditional formatting. So I go to advanced controls, and then here we are going to change to a field value. Base it on which field? Well, the measure that we wrote. So let's go to matrix, choose a measure, and click on OK. Now you see that it only worked for the maximum, minimum, and well, a middle value here. So we have to make a small change. So let's go back. And here in our conditional formatting measure, you see we rounded it now to two decimals. Now let's put this to zero. and check if it works now, I see that fixes it. So it's important that you put the U in a round function and round it up to a whole number. Okay, so now we have a color scale, but it's based on the overall minimum and overall maximum of the displayed values, just like, well, when we turn conditional formatting on from the formatting menu. So why go through so much effort? Well, the reason is because now we have full flexibility and we can restart on every row or every column if we want to. Now to do that, we just have to go to a measure. Now at the moment in a measure, we are removing any filter. So any filter on the year, quarter, store is removed. And that's why we find the overall maximum. However, we can be a little bit more specific here and only remove the filter from our day table, for example. So I do that over here. Now you see that the color scales that get applied are based on the values of that row. So here, for example, for the Amsterdam store, the highest value is in Q2, the lowest value is in Q4. And then for the catalog store, the highest value is in Q4, the lowest one is here in Q2. And that is because we remove the filter only from the day table. We keep the filter on the store. Okay, and if we want to do it column by column, well, we could do the same thing, but then we would just remove the filter from our store table instead of the date. Okay, so now we have color scales that restart every row. But what if you want to have different colors than red to green? Okay, 
Well, then we just have to make a small adjustment to our color code. Uh, so for example, here for the U, I could add, let's say, 240, uh, so that we have a different range of the U's, and then go back. And now you see, we go from pink to purple. All right, so you just have to play around with the different inputs uh, that we have here for the color. What if you want to have your colors a little bit darker? Well, then you just decrease the lightness. So over here, we can put it to 50%, go back and see there are less light. In this video, you have seen that having a good understanding of color codes and how you can set a color using a measure opens up a lot of new possibilities with conditional formatting in Power BI. And this was just one of them. Now, if you have any questions, then just put them in the comment section below. And if you got some value out of this video, then consider subscribing. And I hope to see you in the next video.